Disruption has hit the retail industry in a big way. A seasoned player who has seen through the dramatic changes is Bruce Rockowitz. In a Managing Asia's 20th anniversary special, we enter the world of fashion and meet the CEO of Global Brands Group, a company spun off from Lee and Fong. The most profound change in retail is the last 10 years. Uh, by far. And people are going to look back at this moment and say the internet changed everything. Bruce Rockowitz, a seasoned player and an influential figure in fashion and retail. He's the former CEO of Lee and Fung Group, the world's largest sourcing company. And you will see bigger changes over the next 10 years than you've ever seen in the past. In a move to stay relevant and in fashion, Li and Fung spun off its branded goods division in 2014 and put Rockowitz in charge. You can imagine if you're a $20 billion company and $2 billion of it is, is a branded business, the focus is not there. We said, listen, if we split these two companies up, both companies uh, can perform better because you'd be focused, You'd be driven, you separate balance sheets, separate management, full-time management. And so we spun it off. Um, that was basically three years ago uh, in July. We made the name up. We made the brand up, Global Brands Group, everything. And, and today, we created a, a uh, formidable new brand company. Well, you were the business. CEO of a bigger group, a bigger yes. sourcing giant. Yes. Were you happy to take on the role of a smaller company? Very much so. In fact, why is uh, that? Uh, you like it, a challenge? I've been being the CEO of a very big group for about ten years mm -hmm. uh, before that, and I think uh, the time was right for me to to, to take on another um, initiative uh, and a smaller business to build it up to the size that, that we built up Lee and Fung to. That's what excites me: is this uh, idea that I can grow something from a four billion dollar business, actually three billion when we took it over, mm -hmm. to a twenty billion dollar business one day. That, that's what excited me about when I took over Lee and Fung. Think about it, when I started Lee and Fung, it was a three or four billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. When I left in 14, it was a 20 billion dollar company. I want to do the same thing again. The next generation, Spencer, was ready to take my place. And so it gave me an opportunity to, to really get into the brand business, which I love. But instead of owning the runway with its own labels, Global Brands Group sketched up a plan focused on licensing, gathering a star-studded portfolio including Katy Perry, Kelvin Klein, Fry, Spider, Biotherm and Kenneth Cole. I took a different tact. The company took a different tact. We're going to be a portfolio of brands. And to have a great portfolio of brands, you cannot start from scratch. It would take you much longer than we're all going to be alive uh, to create a, a whole big portfolio. Think, think about the luxury portfolios. It took them 100 years, 200 mm. years to get there. So we knew that, that we couldn't have a, a portfolio unless we either bought a group of them, but that would be limited. And that, and would, that would require a lot of money. Require a lot of money, huge bets, and, and it would be with this fast-changing world, mm. I'm betting on something that may be not uh, a great brand. So this was a safer option. It's a safer option and so we we look at it as a portfolio. So Bruce, how do you go about picking the brands you want to license? So every time we license a brand, mm. there's a big investment yeah. and there's a big commitment. And it, it may be opening stores, people, producing goods, design teams, all, all, everything that goes along with it. So we spend a lot of time deciding should we bring on a new brand or not because it's a very long-term commitment. It's not something you can get in and get out. Uh, it's at least five years, mm. at least. But, but we're looking really for 20 or 30 years. Mm. Are you very picky when it comes to the brands you want to invest in? Very. I mean, uh, because it, it w it's like a marriage. You're expecting to do this forever. Mm. Hopefully, you, you never have a divorce. Mm. Getting into a brand is a lot easier than getting out of a brand. <laughs> 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 so we don't want to go that route. Yes. <laughs> The CEO now wants to make GBG the biggest brands company in the world. We're being asked by many different uh, brand owners to license to us. I don't think the issue today is for us to get licenses. The issue today is for us to decide which licenses we want to take. Even if it means, Rockowitz says, fixing troubled brands. BCBG is a great brand. 
People still like it. Um, it's still important. But the business itself ha had a lot of issues. Had too many retail stores. And so the losses from the retail stores was weighing down the company. So we take this brand over, reposition the distribution of the brand, improve the design of the brand, and then maybe globalize it and bring it to other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what we do. There's a lot of opportunity to take brands that, that are uh, not impaired, but the business is impaired, and fix it. The U.S. is your biggest market. Mm -hmm. You're based in Hong Kong, and mm -hmm. like you say, China is at your doorstep. But yes. you have a very small presence here in the region and even in China. Mm -hmm. Are you likely to change that? I'm here, you know, um, because I am focused on changing this. We know the biggest growth over the next 10 years is right here in China and the rest of Asia. Uh, you know, places like Korea, Indonesia, the, uh, Philippines. There's huge growth ahead of us. But we have to make sure we have the right platform, mm -hmm. have the right people, and the right brands, and the right product. The product that sells in the United States and Europe can't be exactly the same. Uh, some can be the same, but there has to be some changes because every taste is different around the world. And so we're small because we decided to come here, when I say come here, actually to sell to this part of the world mm -hmm. only about three or four years ago. Give me some numbers. How big could China be for you as a market? I think it's at least a billion dollar market, uh, U.S., for us. Um, I don't know when we'll get there. It could be five years from now. It could be three years. It could be seven years. It's, it's a wild card. Uh, you know, we don't want to grow faster than we can handle. The U.S. is your biggest market. Yes. How confident are you that growth there will continue? And where do you see consumer confidence under the Trump administration? <laughs> Well, first thing is, uh, when you look at the history of sort of uh, retail growth, it's been pretty consistently growing mm. about 4% in the United States through thick and thin. You know, there's, there was a blip in 2008, but go back the last 15 years, it, it's continuing. And people talk about the, the death of retail in the United States, and, and that's so overblown. Uh, there's, there's a transformation of retail, mm -hmm. and it's not all e-commerce. You know, people like Costco and Walmart and all different parts of the market, uh, TJ Maxx, some of the department stores, are doing well. As they evolve and they make malls more exciting, people come back to the mall and then retail will be better in the mall. Mm -hmm. so, so you see health clubs, fitness centers being built, mm -hmm. you see uh, SoulCycle going into some of the malls, you see all kinds of components of experiential things. Mm -hmm. That's going to keep pushing excitement for, for selling retail. It will not go away. And now when you talk about Trump, um, the economy in the United States is still vibrant. Mm -hmm. And with Trump, without Trump, because of Trump, I don't know. Uh, there's definitely a lot of turmoil. I, I, I would never say that uh, it's, it's harmonious, the U.S. government right now. And I, I would think even the president would, would probably say that too. Um, but it, it, it hasn't affected yet the consumer. Um, and maybe they're entertained um, by what goes on every day. And eventually people get just bored with it, I'd say. Regardless of politics and Trump, the U.S. will continue to be your biggest market. That's, that's for sure. And mm -hmm. uh, when I talk about China, high, high growth, but it's small. So if we grow 10 percent in the United States and we grow 40 percent here, it's going to take many years for China in our business to catch up to the, in the United States. Last fiscal year ending March, you posted revenue of 3.9 billion U.S. dollars, mm -hmm. an increase of 11.6 percent. How do you expect to do this year? Double-digit growth in the retail industry or, or as a wholesaler, because mm -hmm. we sell to retailers, we have some retail stores, is huge in, in, you know, in, in this, this time because cause generally a lot of uh, people are not growing. In fact, generally a lot of people are going the opposite way. So we we're really, we're happy to have double-digit top-line growth. Mm. I, I would say as a company, that's pretty much where we'll be over the next few years. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on what we do. A lot of that growth is coming from new initiatives, like BCBG. When you look at BCBG, it's, it's a very big business. Mm. It's a six, seven hundred million dollar business in the past. After we reposition it, it'll be a multi-hundred million dollar business. So that's incremental growth that will come uh, and, and almost be double-digit growth um, as soon as it's annualized. And then our existing brands are growing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have you know, some, some that are doing extremely well, and there's some that are not doing so well. That's why you have a portfolio. 
overall, I think people can look to global brands to grow top line 10 to 15 percent each year. That's kind of where we're positioned. Well, if you look at your margins, mm -hmm. they've been doing pretty well, over 30 yes. percent. What are you doing to improve your margins? Since we uh, spun off, we've improved our margins almost 500 basis points, maybe mm -hmm. more, maybe 600 basis points. What are you doing behind the scenes for that to happen? We did a lot. I mean, first, we improved our, our brand portfolio, so we have um, better uh, selling power and you can charge higher prices. But the main thing is we, we improved our um, sourcing and we got uh, better prices, new countries. Um, we, uh, we really worked on the efficiency of the whole sourcing model. How much of Lee and Fung's sourcing network are you optimizing on to bring down costs? Uh, they're a big part of us. Uh, you know, we, we're a spin-off from Lee and Fung. Um, more than 50% of our business comes from Lee and Fung today. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that changing at all. Uh, uh, they're, I think they're, they're, they're a great sourcing partner. Many brands today are cutting out the so-called middleman, going directly to the factories themselves. Is it only a matter of time before they say to themselves, hey, we will handle the sales and distribution channel ourselves? In other words, how does a company like Global Brands Group stay relevant? Well, f first thing is we're very focused on being best in class on what we do. So as I said, we're the largest, one of the largest, if not the largest kids company mm. in the world. And in the men's and ladies area of our business, uh, a lot of our business is driven by people that are buying a brand and don't want to operate. They're buying it for an investment and then they want to license it to us. In, in the whole men's and ladies area, we have between 10 to 40 year agreements. So it's many years out that people could take it back if they want to. I don't envision that. Nobody's going to go direct to a factory. They would need to take the brand back um, and do it themselves, which, which basically, uh, as you're saying, cutting out the middlemen. But the history shows what they're licensing to us, they make more money by licensing it than doing it themselves. So you will stay relevant? Uh, definitely will stay relevant. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you talk to my, my management, especially in the United States, they will tell you, and, and they're like pinching themselves right now, how we're being inundated by some of the great, greatest brands and people that are buying brands, that they would only buy the brand if we would take the license. And so we're more than relevant today. And, and what's happened is quite unique, is that we consolidated a lot of smaller businesses to become mm -hmm. Global Brands Group. So we've become this large licensed company that nobody's ever seen before. Mm -hmm. and, and it's given us an opportunity in the market to take on a BCBG, to take on Spider. To, to take on Joe's Jeans, to take on Jones, and all these brands that we've taken on, mm. there was no company there that, that, could, that can handle that, that had the platform to do it. Don't go away, more with Bruce Rockowitz, CEO of Global Brands Group, in just a moment. The cycle of brands is going faster, it's speeding up, brands may become less relevant quicker, and so the future of speed is all in the design and development process. Managing Asia, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia on CNBC Live. You can check out more of our great content by clicking on the videos on screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thanks for watching.